Yeah, good to go. Breakfast this morning was a can of mackerel on wholemeal toast with sriracha. I'm obsessed with canned mackerel. This, this is going to ruin my career, isn't it, this interview? The last thing I ate today was a protein shake. <laughs> it's terrible. I'm going to lie. I'm going to say the last thing I ate today was a smoothie, which it was kind of. Um, and it was made with blueberries, avocado, loads of spinach, loads of yogurt, uh, some uh, protein powder in there, beetroot, and a lime. I always put a lime in my smoothies because that helps to get the iron out of the spinach. The vitamin C, very important. Mum kind of started teaching me to cook, but I quickly surpassed her level. <laughs> so then I went to Cordon Bleu and learned how to bake properly. And cookery, I think, I'm still learning. Earliest food memory is going to be mum taking the a scoop out of a, a, a cupcake, filling it with cream and jam, and then putting the, that scooped bit out back on in like a butterfly. Making butterfly cakes with mum, basically, I think. Or licking the beaters from the handheld mixer. The food I grew up eating was very basic, rustic, Lancashire farmer's fare, so hot pots, uh, roast pork, roast lamb. Very meaty affair, actually, in my childhood. Uh, lots of potatoes, lots of white carbs. Always white, buttered white bread for dipping in my gravy, because uh, when you're in Wigan, you've got to eat your gravy. And uh, fit a lot of fish and chips. I, my parents had a fish and chip shop, so I used to eat a lot of pies, a lot of fish and chips. And I can only have fish and chips now, maybe once a year, when I crave it, when I need it. My crab and sriracha mac and cheese, or ooh, my ragu with tagliatelle, always makes people happy. Served with focaccia and copious amounts of Montepulciano red wine. Oh, <laughs> biggest cooking disaster, they happen daily, I think. Uh, I think the most memorable one and the most broadcast one would have to be putting salt instead of sugar into my rum bar bars on Great British Bake Off. Still can't get rid of that, still haunts me. Strangest thing I've eaten, I think, is a goose barnacle. It was at Extet, I think that's how you pronounce it, the restaurant in Stockholm, uh, where everything's cooked in fire and we had these goose barnacles and they still had the kind of shell, the goose-shaped shell on the top and these little wormy maggoty things. Very pleasant, but not very nice to look at. <gasps> this is a tricky question. Maybe Yorkshire puddings? I know a lot of people love them, but a lot of people don't get the faff, the hype. Yorkshire pudding is a staple. I don't know what I, I, don't know what I would do. I think I'd be an actor or a dancer. I would have done performing arts. I think doing the Bake Off at the same time as doing my law degree I think that was a big year for me. But also, I think overcoming personal trauma. I know I know it's getting a bit deep, a bit, bit Oprah style, but I think overcoming a lot of trauma is a huge achievement for me. I think it would be someone like um, Dawn French, Nigella, maybe. But I think I'd be too intimidated by her presence, so I would probably hide in the cupboard. Steph McGovern, who I work with, although she's very fussy. No, she's not fussy, she just doesn't like parsley. So I make sure I put loads of parsley on her dish just to annoy her. I think, actually, I'm going to scrap all of the above and say my dream dinner guest is my boyfriend. Because we like to eat, we can eat messily together, and I can't be bothered with other people. I'm quite a lonely lone wolf. I like my own space. Favourite pizza topping is Friarelli or wild broccoli or uh, turnip tops. It's like a kind of peppery, spinachy, rab flavour, and it, oh, it is insane. And a local pizza restaurant to where I live here, they do a wild garlic rapini pizza. Oh. Ooh, my dark chocolate cake with a dark chocolate ganache because it is so easy to make. It's wet ingredients, dry ingredients. It's like the fudge cake from Matilda, basically. It's the best chocolate fudge cake on the planet. So the biggest cake I've made was for the winner of RuPaul's Drag Race UK, the Vivian. It was his wedding cake. And it was five tiers of cake with each tier having five layers. So that's 25 layers of cake. Sorry, fly. 25 layers of cake. Organized, it's very organized, get everything ready. Um, lots of flavour. I like to put loads, probably too much flavour. Not very refined. Oh, I don't believe in guilty pleasures when it comes to life because I think if it gives you pleasure, why feel guilty about it? But the thing that I probably shouldn't admit to is the occasional McDonald's and Domino's pizza. But I'm human. Only God can judge me. If you fail to prepare, you're prepared to fail. So before you start cooking, get everything chopped out, weighed out and ready. Food inspiration, obviously Nigel Slater, Nigella, Diana Henry, I love her writing and her food, but also a chap called Richard Bertinet. Uh, he is one of the best bakers in our country, in the world. Um, but also I like people like Dominique Ansel, uh, you know, the out there bakers as well. I take, I derive a great deal of inspiration from a great deal of sources, so I don't really have one inspiration. And I always think you should never idolise another human being because it ends up being disappointing. My sticky toffee pudding 
is the best sticky toffee pudding on the planet and that's been clinically proven. But I think I would even put over and above that uh, my scones with jam, clotted cream, butter. My scones are the best scones. And I'm, you know, I'm quite a modest person, apart from when it comes to my STP, the sticky toffee pudding, and my scones. Oh God, it's Dotty. It's the neighbor's dog. Oh, the camera! <laughs>